Uh, it seems to me as I go through organizations, there are four things that managers do that actually create value. Now, wait a minute, having said that, all management work, value creating work, is in the big scheme of things still incidental work. Right? I have never gone in to buy a product, and I uh, fancy you have not either, where I said, gee, tell me how much management there is in this product. Uh, if there's a lot of management, I will pay more. If there's less management, I'll pay less, or maybe it's the reverse. Um, I've, I've never asked that question. I've said, does the product work? Does it have the functionality I need? Is the price right? But I have never asked about the management in the product. So from the customer standpoint, the end customer who's paying to keep all of us uh, busily at work, uh, well, they don't care about management. But hang on, uh, you have to do this. So maybe it's incidental work, but it is essential work. And what are the four things? Well, here's what I've got on my list. Number one uh, is to gain agreement on what is important. Now, by the way, I didn't say decide what's important. The old kind of notion of the big boss is the big boss decides and the little people do. Uh, we all know that doesn't work. But how do you gain agreement? Real agreement, not uh, enforced, you know, ham-fisted agreement, but a true heartfelt agreement on what is important for the organization to do now. And typically there are problems. If you work in an organization with no problems, uh, you should not be on this seminar, uh, or I guess you've got nothing else to do, so maybe you should be on this seminar. But all organizations at all times, including, as we know, Toyota, uh, have problems. So can we get agreement on what the problems are and what we should do? A second a job of value-creating task of management is to create brilliant, and that to me means lean, uh, processes to address the problem to achieve what's important. A third, boy, is this one underrated and indeed almost completely ignored, to create basic stability in the core processes and then continually improve them. And that's mostly at the front lines of management. But wait a second, when you go in and spend a day with managers and you observe what they're doing, even up close to the top, they're busy talking to the customer about things gone wrong. They're busy talking to the supplier about things gone wrong. They're busy talking with operations or with design about things gone wrong. Complete instability. Can't depend on anything to ever happen right. And so the job of the manager at many levels on the fly is to do something in order to get through the day. And that, by the way, is why managers are so tired, what I call the Muri of management, which is the overburden, if you know about Muda, Mura, Muri. Uh, what most managers feel most is Muri. Uh, too many things, everything's out of control. Uh, it seems like kind of fun, maybe, early in the morning. Doesn't seem like any fun at all by six in the evening, because, uh, by the way, probably very little has been fixed. So that's a third aspect of management. And then the fourth, and again, uh, terribly underrated, is mentoring subordinates so that you are creating lean managers. And uh, in the Toyota in the old days, and I think there's been some dilution of this, and I think it's a big problem, they always said that a manager's most important job is to manufacture new managers. But wait a minute, how you do that? Uh, send them to school, give them a lecture, send them to an online seminar? Uh, don't think so. Uh, instead, you manufacture new managers by engaging them in deciding what's important, by engaging them in creating brilliant processes, by engaging them in creating stability. Uh, you learn by doing. Uh, we all know that's the best way. But uh, do you have a management system? I ask all companies that actually causes anybody to learn anything by doing other than how to drive a fire truck. So another way to state this, uh, what I've called the value-creating work of management in summary, is that it's about gaining agreement on your purpose. And purposes do change over time because in any successful organization, the fundamental purpose is to solve customer problems. And those change. Uh, customers want different things at different times. Uh, that you address purpose by creating processes and then to create, sustain, and improve processes, you have to engage. A magic word, people. Engage people who touch every process and a dialogue. And boy, dialogue is hard. Soliloquy is easy. Uh, monologue is easy. Dialogue uh, is hard. Uh, the sum up that we've been using at LEI for the last year or two is it's all about purpose, uh, process, people. Uh, I note that most organizations work backwards. 
uh, you start with people and what they want to do, uh, then try to uh, figure out what uh, that means for your process, and then try to convince customers that uh, this is what their purpose is, uh, what we call asset backwardness. And it is the natural uh, way that human beings behave. We all want to behave asset backwards, starting with ourselves. Uh, the great problem of civilization is that we are all point optimizers. And speaking for myself, I am the point I wish to optimize. Uh, this then leads to problems when human beings need to work together. Uh, since we're all point optimizers, how can we actually achieve anything? Uh, the problem of civilization. Okay. Um, here's what observation. And again, I walk through probably four or five companies in some serious way every month. And I always do the same thing. I say, let's pick one of your core processes and let's walk through it together. And let's talk to the people who are actually engaged in trying to manage or to operate this process. And let's see what happens. So I was just doing that in Southern Africa. Uh, same method I use everywhere. I've given away my secrets now. That's all I do. But here's what I observe. Uh, very small amounts of what I would call value-creating work. Uh, vast amounts of incidental work, and don't forget if management, even at its best, is incidental work, well, this is incidental incidental work, but it's essential. Uh, you do have to have an annual plan. I'm not suggesting your organization get rid of that. You have a budget. Every department has a budget. Every program has a budget. You're going to have a budget, all right? Uh, performance reviews. Well, we have to evaluate people in some way. Uh, information sharing. Tremendous amount of information sharing from very formal to just schmoozing. Uh, but information has to be shared in some way. These are all things that managers do. Uh, but then what's really striking to me is the vast amounts of waste, uh, in particular what I call the rework of management or the workaround of management, uh, in which most people actually, in a lot of companies, spend most of their time simply trying to figure out how to take things that are broken and somehow or other get through the day. And that is viewed as just how things are. And indeed, if you read Henry Mintzberg, he spends a lot of time talking about what managers do, and it's fixing things that are broken, as if uh, this is value creating. And look, I think Mintzberg's a great guy, but I'm just reading this, saying, whoa, uh, we're going to talk about how people can be more effective at uh, somehow or other deciding which broken thing to fix, as opposed to rethink the management system so that things aren't broken.